Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christie, and in today's video, I'll be teaching you data models and specifically the relational model. So what is a data model? A data model is a notation for describing data or information. And this description generally consists of three parts. The structure of the data that tells you what kind of data is stored and what is the relation among that data. And operations on the data. What kind of operations can be performed on that data? For example, whether you can insert or update or delete the data or you can just view the data. And lastly, constraints on the data. Constraints are a set of rules and regulations that are applied to the data in order to make it more authentic and consistent. Uh, let's move on to the relational model. So the relational model uh, consists of a collection of tables and each table is assigned a unique name. So think of this as having a file system in your personal computer or laptop or your mobile phone. Each and every file in the file system contains a unique name. And if you have one folder, you're not able to have a file with the same name in the same folder. So same is true for a database. A database is like a folder and it cannot contain tables having the same name. So this is why we need to make sure that the name that we provide is unique. And also there are, it's, it's basically a table with rows and columns, but we just refer to it with different names. So a table, is known as a relation, a row is known as a tuple, and a column is known as an attribute. So table is a relation, row is a tuple, and column is an attribute. That's a relational model. Here is a very good example of a table in a relational model. I have named the table as person, and so this should be a unique name. And I wouldn't call it a table anymore. I'll call it a relation. The columns in my table are ID, name, and occupation. So these columns would be known as attributes. Now, each and every row in my table contains some information. For example, the first row says ID is one and the name is Joseph and the occupation is being an engineer. So this row these three details all together form a tuple. This is one tuple, this is the second tuple, and this is the third tuple. So these, these rows are known as tuples. That's basically your relational model in a nutshell. Okay. Now, every attribute in the relational model contains a set of permissible or permitted values. Now, what are permissible values? If I'm talking about a column that is named ID, and I have a, a department, and in my department there are 100 employees, and I would like to give them IDs beginning from one and ending at 100. So it is a sequential uh, order, and I just want to give it give IDs in that manner. So I know that my ID column or attribute should not contain any characters like A, B, C, and so on. It should not contain any special characters like star and hash and all that. What it should contain is only numbers and numbers only from 1 to 100. So those values from 1 to 100 would form a domain for my ID column. Those are permitted values and they form the domain for my ID attribute. Now, there are two types of domains. One is an atomic domain, and there's, an, there's a non-atomic domain. So an atomic domain is one that has indivisible units, and a non-atomic domain obviously is the opposite, so it has some subparts in the set. What this basically means is uh, these two domains, an atomic domain would have a column, say, for example, 
uh, a column that says your current city so a person cannot live in two different cities at the same time so we know that for each and every person there will be only one current city at this moment so such a column would be an atomic domain when we know that there's only one value possible but a non-atomic domain on the other hand uh, you can take an example of a person's contact number now everybody has several contact numbers so this domain definitely is not an atomic domain because with one person you'd have to associate several contact numbers so while storing it in a table you probably have to store it uh, in comma separated values which is why this is non-atomic okay uh, having settled all of that now let's see what's a super key okay so a super key is a set of one or more attributes that taken collectively allow us to identify uniquely a tuple in the relation in any database it's very important to be able to identify each and every tuple of every relation uniquely and this would help you in order to make your searches faster when you're looking for something in your table if every row is uniquely identifiable it just makes everything better for you it, it helps with your consistency and it helps with uh, all your searches so what we do is in order to uniquely identify each and every tuple in the relation we define some set of attributes which we know now this set could be even just one attribute or more than one attributes and we would know that these attributes together when taken collectively will always have a unique value and that is why they can help you to identify each and every tuple uniquely now that's called a super key this, this collection that, that collection of attributes so just like you have a super key you also have a candidate key what is a candidate key? A candidate key is a minimal super key. So super keys are sort of extravagant. Sometimes they contain things um, or attributes that are not required at all. So if you remove such attributes which are not necessary in identifying a tuple uniquely, then what you get is a set of attributes uh, which, which, which is completely necessary. There's nothing extravagant about it, and that would be a candidate key. And we'll understand this better with an example. So I have a relation over here that's called software updates. So I have made, suppose I've created this for a software that I have, and whenever I make updates to my software, I store data in this table, which, which has year, month, date, major, and minor attributes. What it says is in 2008, in the first month, that is January, on the 13th day, I made zero minor updates and, sorry, zero major updates and one minor update to my software. And so on. on in 2008, in the fourth month, that is April, on the 23rd date, I made zero major updates and two minor updates to my software. Uh, that's what the table says. Now, if you look at it very carefully, you'll find that each and every attribute contains some repeated values. For example, year is having 2008 twice. Month has 0404 twice. And date is having five twice. And major is having zero and one. Both are twi coming two times. And minor has one twice. So this creates a problem for me that I cannot select one single column or one single attribute to be the thing that uniquely identifies each and every tuple of my relation. But I can make a super key. A super key would contain several attributes that could uniquely identify my relations tuples. So here are some examples. One example of a super key is year major and minor so you, you can see over here 
that I have a year 2008, major zero and minor one. Do you have this combination anywhere else in this relation? The answer would be no. Suppose the year is repeating 2008 and major also is repeating, but the minor is different, which is why I can distinguish the first row, the first tuple from the second tuple. So this is a super key. But then again, when I look at it, I don't really need the attribute year. Okay, without the attribute year, I can still manage to identify every tuple uniquely. For example, zero and one, zero as major and one as minor are never repeating again in, in, in this relation. It is possible that afterwards when I add more data to it, it might repeat, but right now it's not. So I could say that major and minor together form candidate key. And in, the, in a similar way, year, month, date, and major together form a super key. But then I also know that if I removed major from there, then also what I would get would be a key that could identify everything uniquely. So the year, month, and date, that is a candidate key because it's a minimal super key. And having learned this, now we're going to move on to something very important in a relational model, which is a primary key. What is a primary key? One key chosen from among the several candidate keys. Now this is the one that you'll actually define. So you can say that make finding super keys and candidate keys is just the groundwork for, for finding the primary key which is the most important key in your table, which is the one that you will define when you create the database. So whatever candidate keys you find from those, you are going to select one that is to be the primary key of your table. And primary keys lead you to another type of key, which is a foreign key. And foreign keys can be explained in this way. You have a relation, named R1 and it has among its attributes a primary key which is taken from another relation R2. So this attribute is called a foreign key from R1 referencing R2 and you'll understand this better once I show you an example. Now the relation R1 is called the referencing relation of the foreign key dependency and R2 is called the referenced relation of the foreign key. And again, as I promised, you'll understand this better with an example. So example, let's take a referencing relation and in a, uh, just in a second, I'll explain to you what that is. So this is a relation which is orders relation. And I have already specified that order ID is a primary key. And I've specified what foreign keys are. And now let's have the reference to relations. So there are two, one is customer and one is um, employee. So the customer relation is having customer ID and name and employee relation has employee ID and name. So in this case, obviously the customer ID is the primary key for, for customers. It uniquely identifies each and every customer because names could repeat, but ID would be unique. And for this relation right here, you have employee and here employee ID is the primary key. Now in the referencing relation, I have order ID, which is a primary key. And it shows me basically that this customer has placed order ID one, and it is being taken care of by this employee. So this could be something like running a restaurant and placing an order. And one of the uh, waiters would be taking care of that order. So you're the customer and the waiter is an employee. And this is your order ID. So as you can see, this one here specifies that the customer ABC has placed this order. And the one over here specifies that the employee XYZ is taking care of that order. So what you are basically doing is you are uh, exporting 
or rather importing values from some other table. So the referencing relation imports values from the referenced relation. So it is taking values from here and it is taking values from here. That is called a foreign key. So the customer ID is a primary key in customer table, but it is a foreign key in orders table. And same is true for employee ID. It is a primary key for employee table, but it's a foreign key in orders table. Okay. And this brings us to a very important concept, which is the referential integrity constraint. This is a very, very important rule that should be followed by all relations. And again, these are referenced relations and this is a referencing relation is the same example. What is a referential integrity constraint? It requires that the values appearing in specified attributes of any tuple in the referencing relation also appear in specified attributes of at least one tuple in the referenced relation. And I'm going to explain it to you in really simple words with this example that we already saw. If in this example I were to add a customer ID 5, that would be wrong because my original table from where I have actually borrowed the key, that's why it's a foreign key, from where I am actually referencing the, the ID does not have a customer with ID 5. It stops at 4. So this is why it is wrong to add 4 as a customer ID here. That violates my referential integrity constraint. And the second issue, suppose I were to add in the employee ID an ID 3, then again that would be wrong because my employee table does not contain a third employee with ID 3. So that would again violate my referential integrity constraint. So what it basically says is whatever values come here in customer ID in orders table must be taken from here. They should appear at least once over here. Okay. Also notice how in this, in this uh, relation, the primary key always has unique values. So you can see that one, two, three, four, and nothing is going to repeat from there. And same way here, you have one and two, and neither of those is repeating. So that is what a primary key is and you understood what super keys and candidate keys are. And the most important one, preferential integrity constraint. That's it for this video and please watch the next videos in order to understand more about DBMS. Thank you.